Hi everyone, my name is Ava William. I have gorgeous hair, or did. My looks made me dream of working as a flight attendant. It seemed to me that I would do well, especially since I knew several languages, including fluent Russian. My father abandoned my mother and I a long time ago. My mom said that the reason was her illness. She had bipolar disorder. That illness gave me a lot of problems, and my mom, well, she managed to ruin my whole life. Do you know what that is? For those who don't, I'll tell you briefly that it's psychosis. It's a condition in which a person has severe mood swings and can't function normally. You know, it's sad to say, but bipolar is so popular in our Western country right now. Here, my mother was no exception. When my mom was in good spirits, she was so kind to me and open. She talked to me all the time, but what she loved most was braiding or brushing my hair. I did have gorgeous, beautiful hair that got a lot of attention from guys, but there was no way I could go out with them because I couldn't leave my mother. If she got upset and dimmed again, it could drag on for a couple of weeks. Mom wasn't able to do anything at all. She would just lie there or break things. To create good conditions for her, I had to earn a lot, but as a waitress, you don't earn that much. Then one day, a man came into our cafe. At the sight of me, he immediately said he would like to invite me for an interview at his airline as a flight attendant. I first thought, no, I cannot leave my mother. She's here alone. Then my girlfriends, other waitresses, offered to hire a professional nurse for her. I don't feel like I can leave her. Yeah, well, this way you'll be with her for the rest of your life. Tell me, how many relationships have you started with guys in the last four years? Seven, I think? And how many of them lasted longer than one day? Zero. I don't blame your mom for her condition, but when are you going to live your life? Besides, being an air hostess is lucrative. It's a chance to travel for free, and also, it's what you dreamed of. You're beautiful, especially your hair. In some ways, she was right. I had always dreamed about it. I couldn't afford anything else besides working as a waitress but I couldn't leave my mother. That moment, the chef walked in. Hey, Ava, go serve our favorite customers. Oh no, again, I just hated those customers. They'd come in, they'd want a bunch of stuff. The chef was just happy. But, yes, there was a but. These freaks were always getting drunk in the booth and calling only for me to serve them. I hated that more than anything. No matter how much I begged the chef, he still went along with it. These jerks would pay the same amount on top just to have me sit next to them while they stroked my hair. I couldn't get the smell out of my hair for days afterward. I'd come home broken, but I couldn't relax there either. Every day I'd go home wondering, what's wrong with mom now? What condition is she in? It didn't allow me to relax for a minute. Fortunately, that day, mom was fine. In those moments, I could tell her about the terrible day I'd had and she'd feel sorry for me. She would sit on the couch and I would sit at her feet, and she'd brush my hair after washing it and braid it, and I loved it. I told her about the offer to be a stewardess. I told her I wanted to be one, that it was a good salary, and I felt my mother's hands go down and my braids come undone. I turned around and saw her like that again. Oh no, here we go again. I hugged her and took her to her room, where I tucked her into bed. Mom was like a light bulb, fading and burning out quickly. I didn't even have time to help her right away, but I got used to it. I never thought I could leave her. However, that night, I realized that if not now, then I would spend the rest of my life serving drunken customers, getting a tip of only five dollars. I called that man in the evening and told him I was coming in in the morning for the interview. Suddenly, my mother's voice came from behind me. Where are you going? Uh... Mom, uh, I'm going to an interview. I'll be back quickly. Don't worry. Go to bed and rest for a while. I also went to bed. In the morning, I woke up and went to wash my face. It was weird. My hair was in my face. I looked up and saw that there were just bits of it. What? No, what happened? I ran into my room and saw my hair lying on my pillow with a pair of scissors next to it. Mom? Mom, what have you done? You told me that your hair is touched by drunks. If it's gone, you can keep working there. But you can't do that. How can I go to my job interview with my hair like this? Oh, I didn't think... Anyway, you should be thanking me. 
Mom went back to her room, and I went to the hairdresser's with his horrible haircut. The guy there tried to smooth things out as best he could, but it came out shorter than it was on his head. I was so upset, so he offered to freshen me up a bit. Justin dyed my black hair blonde, then added a couple of pink highlights in the front, put my hair in a hedgehog style, and I started looking good. Not feminine like before, but very sassy or something. Of course, they wouldn't hire me as a stewardess. One dream shattered. But you know, with hair, or rather without hair, I really stopped prying at work. I continued to work in the cafe. I felt both good and bad at the same time. Then Justin, my handyman, came in. At first, we chatted like friends, and then we kind of started dating. Everything happened quickly and unexpectedly. My friend advised me not to tell my mom about him, just in case. But how can you hide something like that from your mom? I said goodbye to him outside our house. I went in, my mother met me, helped me to change, and then sent me to the store for some chocolate. I went there, and I looked for a long time, but I couldn't find her favorite, the one with hazelnuts. What? Hazelnuts? She's allergic to nuts. What is she up to? I grabbed my phone and realized my mom had taken it out when she was changing me. Shit! I went home to find my mom lying on the floor with Justin next to her. What the hell? What happened here? Sorry, I- she jumped me. I didn't know what to do. Jumped you? What are you talking about? I ran up to my mom and started slapping her face. What's wrong with her? Sleeping pills. A small dose. Why? Okay, let's get an ambulance. We need to check her out. She's allergic to so many drugs. How could you? All the way to the hospital, I scolded Justin. He told me that my mom had called him from my number and asked him to come over. Since he didn't get very far, he came right away without finding me. Then, when he wanted to leave, my mom hit him in the head with a frying pan. He fell, she got on top of him, and started hitting him with her hands. I couldn't hit her, but I had a shot left in my pocket for my grandmother. I often bought liquid sleeping pills from her because she has trouble sleeping. I'm sorry, I shot her in the leg, or she might have killed me. But why would she? We went to the hospital, and mom was examined. I warned the doctor that mom was allergic and bipolar. Then the doctor said he'd take a little longer to examine her. After a long three hours, he came out to us in the corridor and asked if she was registered and what medications she was prescribed. I shook my head, in the negative. Why? How did you know she was bipolar? Well, my mom told me herself. When my dad left, she got sick. But she was taking some medication. I'll show you. I showed him a jar from my mom's room, and he opened it, looked at it, and smelled it, and said, That's vitamin C. What? Your mom is not bipolar, but from the looks of it, I shouldn't congratulate you. But how? She's... How come? As a psychotherapist, I'm telling you she doesn't have bipolar. She's not even depressed, but she's very good at manipulating you. You must be going somewhere. Maybe with your boyfriend? Maybe to marry him? Then Justin agreed. That's right. When she hit me, she told me to get out of your life or I'd end up like the rest of them. I remembered with horror that my previous boyfriends had disappeared almost immediately after meeting my mom. So that means she cut off my hair for a reason. I walked into her room, and she just looked at me and smiled. I know everything. Why did you do it? Why did you lie to me? Mom burst into tears, but her tears I no longer believed. Then my friend from the cafe called me and said that a notice had come to work in my name. It was a notice to pay an urgent debt. Yes, imagine that my mother had taken out a loan in my name. Turns out, she was a gambler. When I wasn't home, she gambled on an online casino. That's why she was afraid that I would leave the country and she wouldn't be able to gamble anymore, wouldn't be able to take out loans because she'd have a caregiver with her. Hello everyone, my name is Michelle, and I can boast of the thinnest waist in the world. Well, okay, if not the most, but definitely one of them. Now you will hear for yourself how it happened. Keep listening and watching, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I am also waiting for your comments under the video. I grew up as an ordinary girl, a little plump for my height and age. In principle, everything was fine with me, until one of my classmates insulted me. I was about 12 years old at the time, and I remember him coming up to me and saying something like, Hey, fat girl, step aside. I was so upset. 
It was a blow because I had never thought about my figure before, much less thought that I was fat. It was even more insulting to hear him say it because I liked him. By the way, yes, this is how my poor, fragile heart broke. From that very moment, I set myself to improve, to work on myself. In an interesting magazine, I saw a photo shoot of models. They advertised underwear and I liked one beautiful corset. It looked delicious. Black fabric with a little ruffle, ribbon bows, everything looked so expensive and elegant. I wanted to wear something like this. I saved up my money and bought something like this. Mine, of course, was ten times cheaper, but it was also black. I ran home and tried to put it on. To be honest, it wasn't the first time I did it, and when I did, I couldn't breathe. It seemed to me that all my internal organs were lifted up and someone was squeezing my stomach hard from behind. I've never experienced such discomfort before. I also couldn't hunch over like I usually did. The corset held my posture. This was also a huge plus for it. But I wanted to take it off. I was dying of pain in my back and stomach. I couldn't even eat properly because of the inconvenience. But I wasn't going to give up. I wore the corset everywhere, not taking it off even at night, and kept to a diet, refused sweets or gluten. With each passing week, the discomfort became less and less. I took off the corset only to wash it, that is, for 20 minutes a day, and then put it back on again. My back straightened, the pain decreased, and everywhere, I felt light and healthy. So it took a couple of months, and then I was surprised to notice that I had lost weight. The corset was a little loose in the abdominal area, and that was my victory. What did I do next? I went and bought another corset, a little narrower, firmer, more beautiful, I did not spare the money when I saw that they work. My goal was now not just to lose weight, but to have the thinnest waist in the class. By the way, there was another girl in my class whose name was Lorit. She was the thinnest in the class and her belly was about 55 centimeters at the waist, and I planned to beat her figure to reduce to 50 centimeters. I knew it would be difficult and I would probably have to pull the corset down again, but I wanted so badly to rub that goat's nose so that he would once and for all remember me as the slimmest girl in the class. Well, it was said and done. Every month, I tightened the corset by three to four centimeters, and after about a year, my waist became straight aspen. I remember standing in front of the mirror, taking a measuring tape and wrapping it around my waist, and there was the cherished 50 centimeters. I did it! I became the thinnest girl in my class. During this time, I had changed corsets about eight times. I continued to diet, to stretch more, and after the holidays, I came to school in a new dress with my favorite corset underneath. Everyone looked at me in surprise, and I was so pleased with myself. I walked up with my slender figure to the classmate who insulted me by calling me fat once, and smiled at him. He stood there in a daze for a while, and then he said that I was no longer fat. I was now sick in the head. Can you imagine? I could have bitten him for saying that. He enraged me. All the pain, torment, and dieting spilled out at that moment in a great aggression. I attacked him like a wild cat, scratched his face, kicked him in the knees and ribs, pulled out the hair on his head like petals from a daisy. And I shouted loudly. I don't remember what, maybe even cursed. The teacher stopped me. She grabbed me and led me to the principal's office. There I told him everything as it was. All the revelations came out of me along with tears. The principal listened to me for a long time, and then called the boy to her office. His name was Austin. He came in, sidestepping me a little, sat down cautiously in the chair next to me, and asked what they wanted from him. The director said that he was not behaving like a real man, then explained that he had no right to insult me and call me names, especially after I had done so much work on myself. Her actions deserve respect, and what else can you show us besides insults? the principal asked, but Austin stared sadly at the floor, said nothing at first, and then turned to me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't want to forgive him, but I knew I had to put an end to it. I told him to get lost, and then I got up and went to class. About six days passed since that day. Austin came up to me again, and he asked me where I lived, and I was surprised, but he said he wanted to apologize properly. In general, in the evening, I was waiting for a basket with flowers and fruit, and inside it was a nice note like, sorry again. 
It was a beautiful gesture, but it wasn't enough. The next day at school, he came up to me and asked me to go to the movies, and I thought, why not? After all, he might be making amends like this. I went to a movie with him, then to a cafe, and we walked home. To be honest, I was still mad at Austin, but at the same time, something else was beginning to stir inside, but it wasn't anger. Not at all. At school, Austin would offer to carry my bag, sit next to me at lunch, sometimes we would even walk home together after class, and he would still come in the evenings. And when we were friends, on one of the walks, I told him that we should stop. Stop what? What is it? He asked me. I'm not mad at you anymore. You don't have to arrange walks, movies, coffees. I'm not mad anymore. You're a good guy, I said. Austin stiffened visibly. He stopped, stood in front of me, and said he didn't do it for that at all. Then for what? I asked, and he kissed me. At first, I was very surprised. I wanted to push him away, hit him. But then I realized that I also somehow wanted this. After a couple of minutes, he apologized for calling me names again. I always liked you, in any way with any parameters, and I do not know why I hurt you then, but I did not want to hurt you. And then when I saw you different, transformed, I was even more confused, he said. He kept saying something, but I still couldn't believe what he was saying at all. Wait, wait, what? So you liked me and that's why you said something nasty? I asked. He looked down at the floor again and nodded. At first, I was very angry again. And then I thought about it and realized that it was really only because of that situation that I saw myself on the other side, stronger in spirit, body, and mind. I proved to myself that I can work on myself in spite of ridicule, talk, or rumors. I did not care at all what they say. I aimed for my goal and got it, and it proved to me what I can do. So what happened next to us? Austin and I started dating. He signed up for a gym to work up his abs. Don't think I put him up to it. He himself decided that for a girl with a perfect figure, then he should be a guy like that. I, by the way, also signed up for sports. I'm on the right diet and have already taken off my corset. I don't need it now. It turns out that I can adjust my figure without it. I continue to feel great, love my body and myself, and I notice that people around me began to treat me in the same way. People feel your confidence and reach out to the strong. So I advise you, before you start working on your body, first work on your inner state, and specifically on your thoughts and attitude towards yourself. Then and only then, the right people will reach out to you and you will have a healthy mind body, brain, and everything else. Well, you get it. Now tell me, are you satisfied with yourself? What would you like to change and why?